श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव it is proved that everybody has taken good breakfast cuz everybody chanted in the morning meditation everybody was in sleep please repeat ishwana anugraha deva <coughs> पुंसा मद्वैतवासना महद्भयपरीत्राण विप्राणुपजाते ये नेदम पूरी सर्व आत्मनवात्मनात्म निराकारम कथम वंदे वर्ल्ड इज नेम एंड फॉर्म सी वॉट इज एन ऑर्नामेंट गोल्ड प्लस नेम एंड फॉर्म इन दीज लेडीज पुट ऑर्नामेंट दे आर मेड ऑफ गोल्ड तो वाय मेक ऑर्नामेंट पुट द ब्रिक गोल्ड एंड ब्रिक no we have to make an ornament so ornament is having three factors one is the gold second is the name and third is the form three of them now out of these three if we tell the ornament to salute the gold how the ornament will salute the gold or we tell the gold to recognize the ornament what the gold will have to do because they are one and the same nothing can be done no action of knowing or not knowing etc can happen therefore yena idam puritam sarvam idam sarvam whatever whatever is recognized objectively is technically called as idam so yena idam sarvam puritam that which is permeating in and through all the things and beings atmana eva atmani everything is in me so who is that who what is the gold gold is supporting all the names and the forms but the gold doesn't have any name or any form see nose ring ear ring suffering these are the names 
gold has none of them. Therefore, what is the principle? The principle is the formless supports all the forms but does not get influenced by any form. When gold is made into two ornaments, then the same gold is further made into three ornaments. Does it make any difference to the gold? No. So what is the principle we have to understand? As long as we are holding on to the names and the forms, we will keep on struggling. And how the struggle comes? The struggle comes when I am sitting for meditation. You know, I saw bright light. Meaning what? I, the seer, and light the scene. So till such time, this objectivity remains valid. In our experience, we are far away from the truth. Therefore, yena idam sarvam atmana eva atmani. Everything is in me. So we have to recognize ourselves as what must be the experience of the formless. Now let us find out. When I consider myself to be body, then the whole world comes into existence. Now I am in this place. Tomorrow I will go there. The here and there is valid only when I am identified with the form. Now we get so much bugged, so much influenced by this form identification that it creates the sense of otherness. Waves against waves, one against other. But in the ocean, all of them are dissolved. The waves do not come on the ocean from outside. Like we have come from outside to stay in this Airbnb. In the same manner, waves do not come from outside. They are dormant and manifest in the ocean. Exactly the same way, the whole world which is names and the forms. Waves are names and forms. Ocean is no name, no form. Now if this example is clear, now where from the whole world comes out? In deep sleep, what was our name? Nothing. What was our form? Nothing. What was our gender? Nothing. Where we were? Nowhere. When we were? Never. So, Desha Kala Vastu and Objectivity, all of them are dormant, unmanifest in me. And when body identification, meaning giving importance and status of reality to the body as real or I, then this world of relativity comes. So, what will be the spiritual practice? Start your journey from the objective world, end up in the body and drop the body and come to that which cannot be reached by any other means. So this is the principle. Now how do we work on it? Therefore, nirakaram katham vande. How can I attain the formless reality? How can I salute? This question is asked by the wave. To the ocean, how can I salute you? Because when I come to salute you, I disappear. So what is the spiritual practice where this I disappears? When I disappears, all efforts disappear. When efforts disappear, samsara disappears. When samsara disappears, only whatever remains is the truth. Therefore, we don't have to struggle anything outside. Recognize this process. In deep sleep, no desha kala vastu. Waking, everything is projected out. Again, sleep means what? Desha kala vastu absorbed. Again, it is projected. Like the 
waves come and go, come and go from the ocean, exactly the same way. The waking comes and goes back, comes and goes back. Be very attentive. When a wave goes back to the ocean, again the next day, is it the same wave comes out? No. It is gone for good. When a dreamer is enjoying or suffering, and when the dream is over, the dreamer has gone back. Then next day, in the next dream, is it the same dreamer? Now, next step. When I slept as a wise man, and next day when I wake up, can I be wise? Not necessary. In short, like for every dream, there is a separate dreamer. Equally true, for every waking experience, there is a separate waker. Like the same wave does not come again out. When we sleep, we go back to the ocean. Body-wise, we are different, our worlds are different. Dream-wise, our dreams are different. Dreamer-wise, we are different. But in deep sleep, we are all one. Because in deep sleep, sleep there is no body and no world. So what is the deep sleep state? Like the ocean. So from the ocean, the waves come, go back. In the same manner, from the causal body, deep sleep, the dreamer comes out, goes back. The waker comes out, goes back. Now can the dreamer salute the consciousness? Can the waker salute the consciousness? Can the wave salute the ocean? Can the ornament salute the gold? When the ornaments will salute the gold, they will disappear. What remains is only the gold. This is what is mentioned here. Katham vande. See? Nirakaram katham vande. How can I salute God? I can salute Him if He is other than me. You know what it is like? Eyes can see all colors and forms. Then the colors and forms thought, let me see which are those eyes. And when the, the colors and forms wanted to see what are the eyes like, they disappear. Because their existence is based on the vision. See friends. So subject can see the object. The objects cannot see the subject. Now multiply this example subjectively. The objects can be seen by the sense organs. The objects cannot see the sense organs. Now next, the condition of the sense organs is seen by the mind. I can't see properly. I can see double things, everything is double, double. Eyes are not telling, the mind is telling. So the mind can know the operating status of all the sense organs. But the sense organs cannot know the mind. What is the reason? Because the mind has none of the attributes where the sense organs can operate. Sense organs can operate only in the five areas, Shabda, Sparsha, Rupa, Rasagandha. And in mind, none of them are there. Therefore, objects cannot know the sense organs. Sense organs cannot know the mind. When you don't know, how can you salute? And then the mind cannot know the I. 
the moment the mind starts seeing who is disturbed, the moment the mind becomes introvert, the I disappears. Because the seer seen difference is over. And therefore, Katham Nirakaram Vande, how can you salute the formless? And you know the beauty of it? We don't have to do anything. Doing is dropped. And for this, the teacher gives Yabinam Shiva Mavayam because I am not separate from the supreme reality and therefore how can I see God? How can I salute Him? Can I salute the Lord remaining away from Him? Remaining other than Him? I can know the truth by being the truth, not objectively. And therefore, when a husband goes to sleep, is he becoming man? No, he is man. But when he is husband, he has become husband. In the same manner, we don't become divine. We are. And therefore, taking this as the foundation, what should be our contemplation? Contemplation is, now find out. If I am Nirakaram or the Paramatma is Nirakaram, then who am I? I am with the form. Now let us start playing meditation, meditation. How to play? What it is like being formless? If I am other than the body, because the body is not required in the dream, this body is not required in the deep sleep, but we continue to exist. Okay, that means I am other than the body, agreed theoretically. Now start working on it. If I am other than the body, what it must be like? Don't simply sit down like a dump. Chittavrti nirodha, chittavrti nirodha, useless. Play. Hello. What it is like being other than the body. Then, other than the body, first of all, I must find out what is body. Body has got a shape and a form. Okay. If other than the body means, the experience will be experience of I, the formless. But I am with the form. How can I experience I, the formless? Come on, play man. Is there anything in this world which is formless? Yes. Find out. Mm. Space is formless. Very good. Now play space, space. What it is like being space. The one who wanted to know this he will disappear. Because mind cannot survive without name and form. So what we are doing? We are giving the mind this homework. What it is like being other than the body? Other than the body means no shape, no form. What is without shape and form? Without shape and form is the space. Now what is the space? Space supports everything, rejects nothing, but doesn't get influenced by anything. Yes. Is it not our experience? We support waking. We don't reject by waking or we don't get influenced by waking. It comes and goes. Dream comes and goes, deep sleep comes and goes, samadhi begins and ends. What does it make differences?
if you have to see something minute, you have to change your focal length. What is that small? I can't see. Adjust the focal length. If you have to see the infinite, what will you do to see the space? You will come to a conclusion. Space cannot be seen by the eyes. But space can be experienced as not an object of knowledge, but we are one with the space. Because now the mind has dissolved. When the mind dissolved, who will sell you to whom? The ornament shape is supported by the gold. If the shape, name and the form is dissolved, what happened to whom? Nothing happened to
वेदांत सार सर्वस्व ज्ञान विज्ञान में वच अहम आत्मा निराकार सर्वव्यापी स्वभाव था नाउ द ट्रूथ इज एक्सप्लेन टू अस वेदांत सार सर्वस्व ज्ञान एंड विज्ञान वन इज वेद सेकंड इज वेदांत वेदांत मीन्स द अल्टिमेट इन नॉलेज Now, what is the ultimate in knowledge? Knowledge that has the components of knower, known knowledge division, what we call technically a triputi, is the mind. And a knowledge where this triputi disappears, meaning knowledge without the division of knower and known or experience. Without the division of experienced and experiencer, see Vedanta Sara Sarvasvam. This is the essence of the ultimate knowledge. That experience, that knowledge, where there is no division of knower and known. Vedanta Sara Sarvasvam. And what is that? Nyanam Vidyanam Evacha. See, it is the nyanam. This experience is vidyana mevacha. This is our ultimate experience, and in this experience, there is no anything extraordinary. This is another important principle we have to understand properly. The principle is. See. That knowledge, where the knower known division doesn't happen, see, that is the vidyanam or that experience is our essential nature. Now, for example, when the experience says, "Oh, it is far away. Oh, it was few years old. Oh, it was red and blue. Oh, it was tasty." Oh, it was very bad smell. Oh, it was so loving. Yes, I understood. All these knowledges are through the agency of known means of knowledge. Objective world is known through the sense organs. That experience where sense organs are not operating is the truth. Second, that experience where the impact of emotions is zero meaning that experience which is beyond the scope of mind where likes and dislikes are no place third that experience which is not a conceptual experience intellect can function only in concepts mind can functions only in likes and dislikes and emotions sense organs can function only in their relative field but that experience which does not involve sense organs mind or intellect this is what is mentioned here vedanta sara sarvasam jnanam vidyanam evacha then what is that aham atma nirakaraha now we just just try to recognize this if we drop on the sense organs then immediately what will happen body shape will disappear <clears throat> then if we do not become emotional and struggling <clears throat> mind dropped then aham brahmasmi don't make a concept of being i so we have dropped the sense organs the mind and the intellect
this is a common experience of all the beings. The experiences differ when we are using sense organs, when we are using mind, when we are using intellect. But the experience of unqualified being is common. This is what is mentioned. Aham Atma Nirakaraha Sarva Vyapi Swabhavata Swabhavata by default. Now each and everything apply. Now this statement is said. Aham Atma Nirakaraha Sarva Vyapi Swabhavata I am the self without any form pervading everything naturally. That is my essential nature. Who is saying this thing? This is said by the vision. Vision says, Aham Atma Niraka. I am the Atma of all the colors and forms. So what are colors and forms? They are many. But Aham Atma Nirakaraha. Nirakara is one. Akara are many. Sarva Vyapi. I am supporting, permeating every color and form. Sarva Vyapi Swabhavataha. So I am supporting everything, but essentially I am nothing or I am everything. Both ways. They are in me, but I am not in them. Bhagavad Gita 9 chapter. Maya tatamidam sarvam jagadav vyakta murti namasthani sarva bhutani nachaham teshvavastita nachamasthani bhutani pashrame yoga maishwaram. Bhuta Vrunna cha Bhuta Staha Mamatma Bhuta Bhavana Maya Tatamidam Sarvam Jagad Avyakta Murtina I support the whole world. Who is saying? Ocean is telling. Avyakta Murtina I am the formless. I support all the waves. Therefore all waves are in me but I am not in them. How come? Waves are born, I am not born. Waves grow, I don't grow. Waves fight, I don't fight. Waves die, I don't die. They are in me, but I am not in them. In fact, from my standpoint, neither they are in me nor I am in them. If we happen to talk to Bhagwan and tell Bhagwan, this world is so bad, you know, all the places, these terrible things are going on. Why don't you take avatar and destroy Bhagavan? He said, Kya bol rahe hu? See? All these things have no existence. Therefore, Bhagavan Krishna knew everything, yet he was playing the game. See, when Bhagavan Krishna told Arjuna in Bhagavad Gita, in the 11th chapter, that all of them will be consumed, killed by me. Don't worry about it. Nimitta matra bhava sabbe sachin. They are already, we write now, thank you in anticipation. Killed in anticipation. You become just an excuse. Nimitta matra bhava sabbe sachin. He knew it. And yet, he played the game. Therefore, our Mahamantra, Karnataka, this is our satsanga nata going on. And any nata must have all kinds of varieties, tests. <clears throat> if there is a drama, one boy comes and uh, let us say in a temple, other girl comes in the same temple, they look at each other, they think they should get married, then they go to their respective parents and thereafter the parents are going to get married and don't come home. Oh. <laughs> drama over. Will it run? When the boy goes to his uh, mother and tells, Mommy, I want to get married to that girl. No, you cannot get married to her. If you want to get married to her, you will have to walk on my dead body. Then the boy says, Mama, it will take too long. You are not going to die now. Thode gum hai, thode khushi hai, ye jeevan hai. That is life. Those who don't have problems in life, they are dead. Dead bodies have no problem. <coughs> if you have got problem, I am not telling you out of my head. It is in Upanishad. 
<laughs> our body three bodies we have got gross subtle and causal body bodies are alive because they can be unhealthy diseases are required to keep the body healthy if there are no diseases body is dead can you find out the incidence of uh, cancer among the uh, catholic graveyards <coughs> no possible therefore when the body can have diseases it is still alive chalo acha hai see and when the body stops having diseases body is dead and the body doesn't die then the five elements go back to the five elements who dies we all have come over here from different places when retreat is over we go back what is last see similarly the subtle body also dies when the diseases of the subtle body end what are the diseases desire anger greed friends enemy when you don't have anything of that your subtle body dies meaning what the mind the subtle body dissolves in consciousness nobody dies marne bhi nahi dete dekho maharaj therefore avdudas are never miserable they are living every moment of their life cheerfully and happily therefore aham atma nirakarah sarva vyapi swabhavatah i am alone the truth all other things they may come go who cares continuing further in the sixth verse यो वै सर्वात्मको देवो यो वै सर्वात्मको देवो निष्कलो गगनोपमः निष्कलो गगनोपमः स्वभाव निर्मल शुद्धः स्वभाव निर्मल शुद्धः स एवाहम् न संशयः स एवाहम् न संशयः ओम पूर्णमदः पूर्णमिदं पूर्णात् पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय हरि हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि ओम